So welcome friends, neighbors, relatives on the call and people far and wide who get the, the delight, the tasty delight of the flavors of health from Jeffrey and Lizette Marks. So two of my dearest friends and long-term colleagues and Bowman College culinary instructors and Marks culinary chefs, private chefs, caterers, and just remarkable holistic nutrition and culinary people. So uh, I'm gonna turn the program over to Chef Lizette. She can introduce herself and the dish. And we're looking at uh, summer cooking. It's, it's the 23rd of June, 2023. So welcome everyone. Welcome Jeff and Lizette. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Ed. So yeah, my name is Lizette. And I'm, I'm Jeff. And we have been, I guess we've been chefs and practicing nutrition for like, what, 22 decades, maybe? <laughs> working through, oh my goodness, yeah. Uh, working through Bowman College, working privately. And a lot of the work we've been doing has been in uh, just preparing meals for people. So we do a lot of personal chefing, but we also do a lot of teaching yeah. and uh, showing people how to cook more healthy foods from home. That's one of our big missions right now. That's kind of the, the thing is making uh, healthy food delicious so that um, you don't have that kind of enduring stereotype that your favorite foods aren't good for you. There's so much of that, uh, but I think it is changing. And that, that's always been our passion is to make delicious food that you look forward to eating that's actually good for you. So I just want to do a quick sound check. Can everyone hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Just I, I just only see us. I don't see all of you. So I might just, before we get started, just change our view because, I mean, you know, it's like looking into a mirror. Oh, great. That's good to know. But let me just change our view. I just want to say thanks, Ted, for putting this on. It's uh, it's great to see you, albeit virtually, but um, <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to uh, do what we love and, and you know, spread, spread hopefully what some nice couple of recipes that are easy easy to do as you as we're about to see yeah absolutely yeah so this is our kind of we have a lot of easy breezy summer suppers but this is one of our favorites uh the first um dish we're going to start making is a pistachio and pepita crusted uh white fish uh you can use rock cod that's in the title you can also use another favorite white fish you can use halibut can use. Um, I like, uh, we're using flounder today just because that's what looked best. So when you select the fish, don't feel like just because the title says rock cod, any white fish that you love. Yeah. Um, the thinner, like a sole, uh, if you just tilapia. If, tilapia, you can use those two. Those will just need a whole lot less cooking time because they're really thin. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to start with that and, and then we'll follow with the cabbage, jicama, and carrot slaw. And this is really, Ed, I know how much you love jicama, so I wanted to <laughs> feature jicama in this recipe. It's so wonderful for a summer season. Even though it's a little cold over here, I still want these summer favorites. Yeah, well, yeah. we decide, we, we always think about what the weather is going to be like soon, because you don't want to, you know, if it's a super hot day, you don't want to have lasagna for dinner. Probably not. <laughs> um, so this, but it, it is funny right now in the Bay area, it's cold and windy and overcast. So it's like, we're making this summer meal. It's like, man, it seems almost like a winter, but it's still going to work. It's still so. going to work. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we're going to do, the, um, the pistachio and pepita crusted fish is really, it's, it's really our way of kind of bringing in that kind of crumb that I, you love crumb fish. Yeah. And, but we want to make a healthier version. So we're using crump crushed nuts, actually ground nuts, instead of panko or breadcrumbs, which is kind of, you know, if you're avoiding gluten or you're trying to be more anti-inflammatory, you want to lose those types of uh, batters or crusts and maybe do something with some nutrient dense nuts. So, so this crumb as an alternative, you're still getting some of that texture, but also the umami is very savory because we're using dry roasted pistachios, which I think are the most delicious of all the nut. And then we just uh, pan dry, um, gave some heat to the pepitas to give them a little toast. So it ends up um, 
it's actually on, just on its own. It's a great thing. You, and it's versatile. You could use anything, you know, uh, to crumb with that. So it just happens to go great with fish. And since the, um, the pistachios, the ones we buy are, um, isn't that, hey, yeah, pistachios. I don't know. They're really popular right now. Get the dry roasted sea salt ones. Then you don't have to add salt to the crumb. Okay, so you've already kind of got enough. So you just put it in a shallow pan like this, and we're just gonna set this aside. So this is what we're going to crumb the fish with. But before we do that, we need to make something for all that crumb to stick to. So we're gonna add and make this beautiful chili aioli. And so we have on our website, we have uh, tutorials on how to make foundational foods like an aioli. In this one, we're going to take a little shortcut and use the uh, primal mayo because it's made with, I think it's avocado oil. Avocado right, oil. it's an avocado oil Very based sweet. mayonnaise. And you wanna get a mayonnaise that doesn't have any of the, you know, more, I would say what polyunsaturated it was like the canola or the soybean oil. So look at the back of your label, make sure it doesn't have that in there. Primal we love because it has a good quality oil. All right, so we're just going to first, um, I'm gonna prep up some garlic cloves. And so I'm just gonna give it a good whack and then just miss this really finely. So what I'm mincing it to is a paste. So you run your knife through it continuously. And then you know, once it's really broken down, we're gonna give it a little help by adding a little bit of sea salt to it. So I add a little bit of Himalayan sea salt, but whatever sea salt you happen to have. And then you keep running your knife through. All right, and then we kind of squish it. Okay, so I'm just gonna run my knife even further through because it takes a little bit of chopping. So when you're chopping, you just wanna make sure you place your guiding hand on the spine of the knife to help control it as you chop away. And then it, invariably, you know, you'll get little pieces on the sides of your knife. Just be very careful as you scrape it off with your finger, just away from the blade, and then just keep going. So pretty soon here, and I'm getting there, wouldn't you say, Jeff? It'll be another hour or so. <laughs> yeah, right. So you guys gotta be here for at least an hour to watch me mince garlic to a fine paste. We might get to the rest of it, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I think I'm there. Okay, so once I get it really, really fine, I wanna bring it to a paste. Now some might ask, why not just put this in the blender, Lizette? Well, the reason why is it's really hard to blend one or two cloves of garlic. I've got a big garlic, so I'm just gonna go with the one. There. Yeah, so you just press the flat of your knife. You put your, I put my index finger, middle finger right here on the side and I press against the board and I let the board help me out as I press this out into a paste, okay? And you can really make it almost like you pureed it in a high powered blender. And of course you can buy this in a little jar, but Good. it's better to do it yourself because- It's fresh. It's, it, you can't get better than this in terms of flavor, so. And you want a texture. So this texture here, I'm gonna show you, it's just like a paste, okay? Just sticks to the side of my knife. And we're gonna add that right here. And it goes. And it goes. And then just gonna do the rest. Uh, the rest, oh, actually I'll, I'll um, we need a little lime juice, so. Do you wanna want pour and I'll stir? The lime juice? Like, a, like we're a team? Yeah, we'll be a team, okay. So I'm gonna cut um, the limes. I just gave them a little roll. And then we're going to just squeeze a little bit of that juice. I'm using your, is it your grandmother's? Yeah. I always talk juice, about this tool. That juicer, it's one of those old school plastic ones from the 50s, um, from Australia, no less. So it, it's, it's, it's done a lot of citrus in its, in its time and it's still, still going strong. <laughs> So we added the garlic cloves. We add about a teaspoon of lime juice. This is way more than a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, am I balling it? There we go. Okay. I can use the rest of that lime juice from a little lime water, make a spritzer if I want to. And then you're gonna you add. A yep. You wanna hand it a little spatula? Yeah. So then the next thing is your sriracha or any um, type of chili paste that you like. So sriracha is very tasty. You can also use gochujang. You can use charmola, 
whatever that kind of like chili profile that you like. So there's a flavor profile even in your chili paste. So just know that you can do that. And then we're going to add a little, so we've got the garlic, the lime, a little bit of sea salt. I'm gonna add about two pinches to it. Thank okay, you. there you are. And then a little bit of cracked pepper to taste. There we go. And so this is pretty quick. So we're making it in real time. I mean, really the only thing you did ahead was, what did you do ahead? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing, so see, that was pretty you easy. You start with the mayonnaise, which you can also make yourself. Yes. Um, but we like to give people options. You can make that from scratch and it's not hard, but you know, sometimes, um you're like that's hard yeah. or i don't have time <laughs> yeah. so we want to make this accessible for you so now the we'll next thing is to do is to prep up the fish so jeff's going to go get the fish it's in the other uh, refrigerator i think we have two fridges you went to the wrong one <laughs> i think we'll see okay and so while i'm waiting for jeff i just wanted to show another uh, element in this dish is a little bit of scallions so we have some scallions here that we chopped up really fine and we're going to use those on the top it's over there wrong fridge. yeah it's okay i just told them you went to the wrong fridge so what happens when you have two fridges so we, we're going to add once we crumb the fish we're going to right before we put it into the oven which i'm going to actually clean it now to 350 okay we're going to top it with the green onions. You'll see here in just a minute. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna switch places with you so you can do this. Okay. You wanna do this right here? Sure. Come on over. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, here's what we wanna do. I'm helping. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take one of these, they come in all these, these are these silicon, they're heat resistant. So, so if you're ever basting something that's hot, it's not gonna melt. Um, we're not doing that this today, but basically wanna just paint your, your mixture liberally. And we're gonna do that on both sides. So he's doing that, holding the first side. Second side and then base, right? Yeah, I would just put it right here. Maybe we'll right save time, yeah. If you want to. So what Jeff's gonna, can you give me a little more of that on that side? So see, this is where, you know, you get a husband and wife team cooking, we got, we're telling each other what to do. So you gotta get used to that. Ordinarily, this process takes about six to eight people. <laughs> That's not true. So I'm actually putting the crumb on. This is the messy part. So you press the crumb on and then we're gonna put it right back in the pan we started in because why use overused pans? So we're going to do that. And then as you do that, I'm going to actually bring this over here. Right. Go right back on here. Beautiful. There you go. Bring yep. it back. I'm going to take that. Incredibly logical, as it's you can incredibly see. Incredibly logical. This is the magic of, yeah, we're cooking this in real time because it really, by the time we get to the slaw, once I'm done with that, this fish will be done. And then we'll plate it up for you so you can see what this nice, easy, breezy summer meal looks like. I'm going to just set that right there so I can just, and, yeah, there we go. And one more. One more. This is about a pound of fish. Yeah. Total. And this makes four really nice pieces. Just in case you're, you're going to get the recipe too, because we've got it all, all set out. Okay, I just need to just put that right there. And put him there. I'm going to take that one and put that one there. Beautiful. And then we're gonna just, so we got almost the perfect amount. Sometimes I, I like to air when you're making the crumb, the ground nuts, just make a little extra because there's always a little more you might wanna add on. And you can even press it on at the end if some of it kind of comes off. Now I did wanna show you this one fish that just gave me, maybe put a little more of that sriracha mayo on. You have a little more. Sure. Yep. Put it on that end. So the I see like an oh. area where it's kind of not, not sticking. sticking. That means you need more of this beautiful mayo. Now, little little uh, lesson here on cross contamination, folks. Yeah, this sauce you can't use. You can't use that mayo with anything else. Okay, so if you make extra, put the amount you think you might need in a bowl. We're gonna make more fish, so we're cool. But put the amount that you think you're gonna make 
use your uh, brush, and then if you need more, pour from the main bowl. Okay, that's like the mother bowl. Now, if you have a fillet like this, where this is the tail end, it's very thin. Okay, so when I put it in, I'm gonna fold it under, that way it cooks at the same rate. I'm gonna have to put it over here and just move it. And then I am going to wash my hands. And then this goes into our oven. Yep. And we're halfway there. So we clear the space, get ready for the slot. Oh. All right. So now we're going to do the slot. We're going to change cutting boards. So we're going to change cutting boards because again, I always like to teach that cross contamination issue because that's really important when you're cooking and when you're cooking at home. When I'm teaching cooking at the culinary school. This is important. So we have a nice clean veggie board so that we can make the slaw. So this slaw is made with cabbage and jicama and uh, carrots. It's very simple. And so what I'm going to do, actually I'm gonna use this, this nice knife. So this is the knife I'm gonna use, my new favorite knife. So what we wanna do, I have this beautiful purple cabbage. So it has actually a flat end. Did you do that? I did. Thank you. So it doesn't always come like this, but um, if you have a nice cooking partner like my husband, Jeff, he'll make a flat edge for you. <laughs> so it's safe and it's not this round ball. So I'm gonna just put my hand right on the other side, curled under just to get the first cut and then press to the top all the way down. And I only need for this recipe, three cups of slaw. So I'm just going to actually first take off the core. So I'm just gonna cut that down and just loosen that core out. And I'm gonna cut from the other end. So I just wanna do that and then just get a nice cut here. I'm just shaving it. So shaved uh, cabbage is essentially just sliced thinly cabbage. You do not need to grate it. You could use your food processor. The one, the, the attachment that goes to the top, that's the shredder. Use that one and uh, you can get this done pretty quickly. Or if you wanna practice your knife skills, then go ahead and cut like this. So this is a high cut, meaning I have to raise my knife up and slice down and make it really thin so you Curl your fingers under, make sure they're out of the way the whole time. And literally this little piece of cabbage is the amount of cabbage I need for this slaw. If I have extra cabbage, you can braise it. You can make a small batch of sauerkraut. You can make more of the slaw. So there's a lot of, or a different type of slaw. So that, I would say that looks like three That's cups, perfect. doesn't it? So we're gonna cut it in half because this is, these strands are a little bit long. You want the cuts to be relatively the same so that you don't have ones that are really long and ones that are really short because then when you're eating it, it's you've just got food falling out of your mouth all over the place. Yeah, and it's not really good day food. You certainly don't want to film people eating or take mm -hmm. photographs of people eating. <laughs> well, you could. Because then it goes viral and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we've got this cabbage here and then the next special, we can set that down there. Um, is the jicama. Okay, so I'll put it over here. So I'm gonna set this aside and get the jicama ready, but before I show you, um, this jicama is pre-cut. So this is, I'm mise en place, so put everything in its place, cut ahead. This helps when you're doing cooking classes, everyone. Uh, but I wanna show you how I prep it and just talk a little bit about this beautiful vegetable. And if you wanna chime in at any point on this one, because I know you love this one, but a jicama is known as a Mexican potato. <laughs> I always thought that was really interesting. Uh, it's also a great um, vegetable to go take on hikes because it's extremely hydrating. So it seems dry, like it doesn't seem to have any liquid in there. So what is it about this, Ed, that makes it so hydrating? You know, it's the fiber. It's the, it's the soluble fiber that holds water. And mm -hmm. then... It's, it's just got its own unique mojo. So yeah. a jicama mojo is different than a potato mojo, is different than a radish, but um, you, you know, it just absorbs minerals. So it's extremely mineral rich. It's very alkalinizing, meaning it kind of cools and cleanses. Uh, it's very refreshing. And then it also retains water in your system. 
So if you're out sweating and you have jicama, it will help because it also has a good sodium potassium balance. Yeah. And, and it's pleasant, you know, and it, it's just, each jicama has its own unique style and flavor. So that's the thing about vegetables, they're not identical. No, yeah, they're not. You, 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 you have one, you go, now that was a good one. And that was, yeah, that was okay. And this is where organic, non-organic comes in because organic is usually better. It usually has a better flavor profile. Yeah. It usually has a better texture, uh, you know, because it's it's got a better nutrient balance and it's got less chemicals. So the thick skin of a jicama means you don't really have to put chemicals in the soil because the skin is so thick and the skin itself is bitter. And bugs yeah. bite into a bitter skin, they go, I'm going elsewhere. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's it's nice. Yeah, it takes a little. It it looks like a thin skin, but it has a lot. You can feel the fiber as you're um, as you're uh, peeling it. So just so you know, it might seem like you know I was putting a little effort. You got to put a little elbow grease in there. And so I'm just going to show you how I cut these. I just literally cut it down just like I did, and it's pretty firm. And this keeps. I I will probably grate some of this and make something sim simple and different, and cut and cut part of it into planks and. Honestly, one of the most delicious ways to eat jicama is I like is with a little lime juice and a little bit of cayenne or smoked paprika or something like that. Yeah. It's really delicious. Okay, so then this cut that I was just showing you, you take the, and you don't have to cut square this off. Like if in French culinary, they would square something like this off to make these perfect julienne. I'm going to make a natural julienne. So I'm just going to keep it the rounded edge because I want to use all the vegetables and then I'm going to cut it into thin one eight inch planks. So I'll cut a few and don't feel like you have to stack these. Actually stacking them makes it more prone to not having a really nice julienne. So then you cut in lengthwise pieces. And there's because of that shape there's some variation. That's why in a you know in fine dining you you square everything off so they're just exactly like the same. Okay. If you want to do that, just keep the stuff that's not the perfect shape and do something else with it. So if you want to present for a dinner party or for a client and you want that perfect cut, um, just don't discard the, the ones that are a little round or a little funky because that's still perfectly good. Yeah, especially like with something like carrots, which I'll show you next. Yeah. Okay, so let me set these aside. I'm going to put it right there. So the carrots, I did an Asian julienne. So these are really, here's a, let me give you an example. They're more beveled, so uh, and but pointy. they're very, and pointy. So they're kind of got this beveled edge and they're pointy, there's different lengths, but we're not going for this perfection. Part of the appeal of the salad is that it has a really nice, um, natural feel to it, very, very. Um, we like to say country style. Yeah, we do. So what you're going to do is with your carrot is you're going to cut on the bias and you cut a nice angle. And the longer your angle, the longer the um, julienne, and then you make these planks. And some of them will be longer than others because as you go, that's sort of what happens. So you make these nice planks, that's how you start. I just graded a bunch of these for my students. <laughs> they did a great job. So you make your planks, and then you can set them one at a time. Like I said, you don't have to stack these. If you stack them, they tend to move and then you don't have uh, nice cuts. And then you make your julienne. So that's what you have here. I've got a few. Did you and peel it or is it skin on? Skin on, I just scrub the skin. Thanks for asking because I want the minerals from the skin. That's right. In some recipes, sometimes people get really fussy and they want you to peel. So scrub the skin, peel the skin, save the peels for your mineral broth, okay? So you can always save it and use it. The same goes with those little odd cuts, that, like you were saying, Jeff, because yeah. um, you can save those for a mineral broth. So sure. I've got these really nice julienne. So now all you have to do next, so we've got that, okay? We're gonna add the hickamit in. And do we have something like a salad tosser? You want these guys? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to first do this with my hands. Just kind of toss it. Yeah. Let's do those. So we're going to toss this together. And then I'm going to have Jeff add the other ingredients. So we'll add the rice wine vinegar. Yep. So the rice wine vinegar, uh, it's, uh, if you don't have rice 
wine or yeah, rice two wine vinegar. Yeah, two tablespoons of that. If you don't have that, you can use apple cider vinegar or it, you know, I wouldn't use balsamics. Use a light vinegar. Champagne vinegar works really well too. White wine vinegar works nice. But the rice vinegar has a nice sweetness to it that really uh, complements the salad very well. So about two tablespoons is all you need. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of avocado oil. And then we want to salt this a bit so that it starts to, um, you know, what happens when you add the salt, it, it starts to actually soften this up. It still remains crunch, but it, it's a little more tender. So we're going to add our neutral oil. Yep. And then we're going to add the sesame oil. Toasted sesame oil. You use less because it's very flavorful. Yep. You wouldn't want to use double this amount. So that's why we, we split it up. So you still get enough oil with the neutral and then the big flavor in the toasted sesame. And if you are uh, like very tactile, feel free to massage this a little bit. It's kind of nice. Okay. And then we're going to add a pinch of sea salt and then dump this. Uh, let's put this one in. Okay. And then we put our scallions in so scallions are kind of a theme here the, the color looks beautiful and then some black sesame seeds i already put them in okay. these are the black sesame seeds i save just a little for the top and then i'm just going to give it a taste so let's give it a taste yeah you have a tasting space somewhere this is such a beautiful salad i hope you can even see it from here it is so pretty Okay, so we're gonna give it a taste. Jeff, give it a taste. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Now it will also improve with time by it leaving will. it in the, you know, sit it'll the you know, the dressing and the vegetables will have a little, you know, friend fun together. Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll make it even more zingy. Yeah, that's yep. right. And this, if you want even more zing, because I have this little bit of lime juice here. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about that. It's, it's, it's talking to me a little bit. I didn't add it into the recipe, but feel free to add it mm -hmm. for a little extra zing. How's that fish? It's probably ready, huh? It looks like it's almost ready. Okay. Okay. So let me taste one of these hickamas. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to add that to the recipe. We'll add lime juice. Mm -hmm. that's you know, if it gets too sharp, you can add a little honey. That's so right. If you do an oops and you go, well, that was, that was good, but now it's too, too sour, too acidic, then you balance that out with honey maple. That's right. Honey. Just a little. Yeah. Just a touch. I mean, literally like maybe half a teaspoon at, could be just enough, right, Ed? That's how it is. Yeah. Another... You taste. Another, you taste it as you go. Yeah, and another thing you could do if you're like, you know, this is great, but I really want that sweetness, but I don't want to use honey and I don't want to use maple syrup. Julienne or shred in an apple. Oh, yeah. So like green apple is delicious in here. It's a nice complement to this dish. This is a little less on the sweet side. It has a nice vibrancy to it and good crunch. And like you said, Ed, it's just going to get better as it sits. Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful potluck salad to bring to a picnic That's or to true. a barbecue. Because yeah. you can sit out and still the it's still crunchy and beautiful. So long as you keep it cool. Yeah. And so I think we should take out our fish. All right. Let's see. I'm feeling like it's done. Can I set some stuff aside? Can you smell it? I can't. Because yeah, that's, that's how you know things are done is you smell it. Yep. You're a good cook. You, you feel it. You go, yeah, I can tell. I can feel it's done. It's done. Oh, yeah. So what you're looking for for doneness here is the fish turns white. That's one. And it flakes easily with a fork. So you can see the fork test. Get it with a little bit of light. And I can see it's just flaking super easy with that fork. Nice. So it's like completely flaky you get a plate yeah so we're gonna get a plate oh my gosh and now that it's out here it's wafting up and this aroma it's like it's telling me we're ready okay so the next thing you would do now just something but i'm not going to do it for this plating if you were to save some of that sriracha mayo 
before, because I'm not using the bowl I have, I'd have to make a new batch, a smaller batch. You could actually put it on the bottom of your plate and do the whole paint swipe if you want to get fancy. But I think it looks really good with, uh, we're going to put the, coles the coleslaw or the, the slaw down first. You know, and this is one of those meals you want to be generous with. And then we're going to plate it to the side. Should we use this guy? Blue guy. Blue guy. A little bigger. Okay. In case it, so, it doesn't so I'm just going to do that and then grab a nice piece. I like this one here. And then you just plate it off to the side like that. Top it with some more scallions. And you have a beautiful dish. We're just gonna give it a little wipe. And there you are. And down, and there you are, everyone. That is our easy breezy summer meal. They just in front of you. Anyone have any questions? So now's a good time to unmute yourself and say yay, Lizette and Jeff. <laughs> yay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely uh, fabulous, you guys. I'm going to lunch. I'm so hungry. <laughs> but, but what do you think about having two people working together? Isn't that a, a good thing? You know, it's not like cooking is the mom cooks for the family and the family you know, runs away. It's like cooking is a, is a team sport and it brings people totally. together and it's fun and, and then, you know, it's just playful. So it's, it's good to witness, you know, chefs cooking together, you know, and, and really bringing that love to the dish because, you know, love is the best ingredient. Absolutely. <laughs> so friends, unmute yourself, share some feedback, questions, comments how you would implement this in your home or, you know, any, any, any variations that come to mind. Yeah. We love that. Yeah. Well, where do you get your pistachios? They're a brand called, what is I'll, the brand? Jeff's going to get the brand for you. Uh, we there. get them all the time. You can get them at Costco actually. So he's going to bring them back. Whole foods, they're available. Um, you know, right now it's tough because uh, nuts are expensive. Very expensive. So when you cr crumble them this way, they go a long way. So you can kind of extend them because we only use, um, you know, half a cup. The brand is called Wonderful. Wonderful. And they're dry roasted, um, shelled pistachios and sea salt. That's all. That's it. So there's no shell on those, Jeff? No, they're shelled. They, they have ones that are in the shell and then they have ones that are shelled. It all depends on how much you want to work. Yeah. <laughs> If you wanted to substitute or if you didn't have access to the pistachios, is there another nut that you would yeah. recommend similar? Yes. Almonds are good. Any kind of harder nut, like pistachios are kind of firm. So almonds work really well. Walmart. You could part walnuts would work Bill, very nice. Filberts. Filberts, hazelnuts are gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, those would taste wonderful. And if you wanted to get to not just add sea salt to do more of the umami characteristics that the pistachios have naturally. You could mm -hmm. soak almonds and then, then toss them in a little bit of tamari and then put them in the oven on a low heat. You make your own kind of tamari almond and then crush oh, those. That, that really would good. also work really great. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> Getting really hungry. I know. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I think I get those pistachios at Trader Joe's. Yeah, they do have yeah. them there too. Yeah, and they're just not, I don't know if they're the wonderful brand, but they do have their oh. own brand. Yeah. Just roasted, dry roasted sea salt. That's, that should be all you see there or just dry roasted, okay? Anybody else have questions or maybe a favorite summer meal that's their go-to? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the other summer meal we're making, we because we cook every week for clients, yeah. uh, like cold soups, although it's cold outside. Some cold soups are really wonderful, like espacho or salmorejo, which is a Spanish uh, blended tomato. And so a lot of times the salmorejo, traditionally you add a crusty bread to it. And if you don't want to have bread, if you're kind of, a, you know, maybe you don't do gluten or you just don't want that much, you can actually sub out the bread for almonds. So coarse ground almonds are a great sub. Blend it, 
everything together until it's nice and smooth and creamy. So mm. it's, it's a delicious uh, uh, summer soup. And then, you know, I don't know if anyone does barbecue. There's plenty of great things that you can barbecue with really beautiful ingredients. And just a lot of the times with this time of year, it's about cooking things and letting their natural flavors um, speak for themselves. Like you don't need a ton of sauces. You don't need a lot of things to cover the food, but actually celebrate how it is, you know? I like that. You know, yeah. if someone doesn't have good fish access, because again, fish is very, um, it's, it's gotta yeah. be fresh. It's got to be local. The, the fried, the frozen fish doesn't always, you know, carry the flavor and the texture. I would mm -hmm. think you could do this with with firm tofu. You could do, you could, yes. You could shred yes. it. You know, you could nut it up and you could toss it up and you could bake it. We do various, you know, baked yep. tofu. And I think there was a time people were really down on soy. And yeah. That's largely commercial soy, which is genetically modified. But an organic soy for most people uh, in the midst of a, a meal, you know, where it's not soy, 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 but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a primary protein. It's very light. It's, it's, you know, it's nourishing. It blends well with this type of salad. It, mm. it would work really well. And if you, you could also use ch chicken breasts, mm -hmm. if you want, um, pound them a little bit so they get thinner and then you would. Do the same thing. Do the same thing yeah. we did with the fish. All right. You can and do it with zucchini too. Yes, you can. You can Egg do it plant. with zucchini, eggplants. Uh, you can even do it with a tomato if you want to. I mean, there's lots of because um, roasted tomato is delicious. Uh, but yeah, there's so many things you can add, change if you want to. Well, I think what we forget is, you know, we think protein, we think meat. Okay. Yeah. And in the summer, it, you know, it, it, you know, if it's hot and it's really summery. Uh, in the middle of the day, you may not want the protein. It's a little heavier. Yeah. So by, by using nuts, it is a protein. That's and right. And it is a fat. And it is a fiber. And it is filling. And it, it's satisfying. So, you know, getting this idea of, of crunchy nuts, even to toss on a salad, can yeah. make a vegetable dish a complete meal. And, and mixing and matching different seeds and you know what my favorite seeds are? Oh, gee, I don't know. Is it flax, <laughs> perhaps? <laughs> yeah, flax seeds. You know, yeah. you can add whole flax seeds to a, to a, you know, a nutty, seedy blend. And then the, the fact that they're whole, they can tolerate a certain amount of heat because yeah. they're protected. If you grind them into a powder, then they oxidize quickly. Yeah. So, so there's different you know, possibilities and properties of, mm -hmm. of nuts and seeds, uh, particularly okay. if people want to eat lower on the food chain, uh, they're much more affordable, they're digestible, mm -hmm. they're also really friendly to the gut. So I think we, we're always looking at the gut now because the gut is, you know, dealing with various friendly and unfriendlies. And so this kind of a meal particularly with that slaw and, and the, you know, a clean fish is really good for the microbiome. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, it really is. I think it would digest well, because again, sometimes yeah. you, you make something and it's too complex and you go, Oh gosh, you know, <laughs> gosh. Yeah. I didn't do it. yeah. There's and some, you, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say also, if you wanted to keep it more plant-based, yeah. This would go good with a homemade, like a black bean burger, you know, like a veg and black bean, make mm -hmm. it make a patty and then do the same thing and, and bake it. That could come out really well. That would be tasty. Yeah. Yeah. There's also in the chat, Diana Wong said that they've started this year loving the barbecue huge mushrooms and using them like a burger. So yeah. I think it would yeah. be what, portobello and portobello would be beautiful. Oh, they're incredible. This crust. You yeah. know, we, we have a mushroom farm near where we live and they grow several different types. There's one that's sort of like a huge trumpet, mm. uh, huge trumpet one that's very meaty. And uh, I think you can get some, in some places you can get different types of mushrooms. Yeah. Berkeley Bowl is mushroom heaven. Yeah. Oh, our yeah. farmer's market, Chris, yeah. and, and uh, has a mushroom uh, vendor and 
we've been getting the lion's mane. That's true. The lion is beautiful because of also the texture of it is firm. And you could do this entire thing with the lion's mane. It just, yeah. it's, it's so beautiful. And it's a nice dense mushroom won't fall apart on you if you're trying to cook it and, you know, do all these things with it. So that's so something you can try as well. question with lion's mane, I'm familiar with it. Would you do anything before you put the breading and baked it? Would you soak it? Would you marinate it? Would you steam it? Or would you just basically slice it, bread it, and bake it? I would just slice it, um, put that uh, sriracha mayo on it, and bread it. That's enough. It will because you don't really have to uh, marinate it. You don't. It, it, sometimes what happens if you do that, it soaks up a marinade like a sponge. So then you add all this to it that we have here, It'd just be almost too much flavor. And then the mushroom flavor itself would get lost. You'd probably change the shape instead of doing like these flat, you, you would make more like, um, like an arancini or like um, a fritter, a smaller, mm -hmm. and then bake those. So they're like more like a bite. I think that would lend itself well to that mushroom. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Or like a scallop. There's yeah. also uh, uh, D. Childler, says that in Santa Cruz, there's a far west fungi. So yes. now in California, we have- We're very like, lucky. Yeah, we have a lot of access and choice. And in other places you have to sort of, you know, adapt to whatever is available, right? Well, but even just mushrooms, or even just regular mushrooms you could do, you know. Oh, absolutely, They're just great, make little so, bites, you yeah. know? I mean, it, the like what Jeff was saying, you could even make this, if you chop them up and put a binder in there, you could even make a patty or like a little fritter out of it. And you could still have um, all this flavor going on. And then there's also one other person, Helga Alicio. Mm -hmm. She's uh, asking about, um, could you use sunflower seeds? I was thinking they would use less water than nuts. So maybe maybe making um, sunflower patty, like you were talking about? Yeah, I would add them, incorporate them into other ingredients, like maybe some mushrooms. But for the crust, you can add, so like I, we've had clients who can't have nuts. So you'd make a seed crust, right? So you could add the flax, you could add sunflower seeds, pepitas or seeds. Uh, some people will put hemp seeds in there and you don't even need to crush those, just put them in there. So probably the only one you need to grind is the pepitas because they're larger. Maybe give the sunflower seeds a quick pulse to grind, break them up a bit and then add the other smaller seeds. Yeah. If you were doing something that needed a binder, would dropping an egg be a good idea or putting a starch or both? Uh, one or the other is probably all you need, like a little arrowroot starch would be a good binder. Mm -hmm. uh, almond meal would add the protein, but not the binding. Yeah, and, and the egg though is definitely. Egg definitely. And then if you don't do eggs, you can make a flax egg. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or a flax yeah. egg. Does that come from a flax chicken? Yes. 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 It does. We so, grow <laughs> flax chickens out here in our yard. And yeah. uh, <laughs> Yep. So to make a flax egg, everyone, you grind flax seeds to a powder and then you add water to it. Yeah. It's uh, like about a tablespoon. Basically what you're going for is as you're adding the water, you mix it, wait, and you want the consistency, that eggy consistency that you see like from the white. I look for that consistency and there is actual ratio. I don't have it. I think, I think it's about, uh, what is it? Uh, if you use two tablespoons, about a tablespoon. So it's a two to one ratio. Yeah, two to one, I'll do it. Two, two yeah. tablespoons of seed, one tablespoon of water. Right. It will get you a, a nice scoop and that will bind and hold. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's fun. Well. All right. You oh, and then, okay. What, what type of beverage would people enjoy with this dish? So I'm opening this up to the, to the, to the customers in the restaurant now. We're All coming right. down to your table. And we're saying, what would you like? Would What's you like beverage? sparkling water? Would you like an adult beverage? <laughs> would you like kombucha? Let's hear some 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 beverage compliments to this dish. I think Emma's out there. I bet she's got a good one. Somebody wants a Sauvignon Blanc. A Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, nice yeah. I don't know that we're serving that, but uh, that's a very good thought. Yeah. Very yeah, good. that would work well. 
What other suggestions? You can speak out or put it in the chat. Coconut water, lime mojito. Oh, yeah. Right. That, sounds that good. would be good. So, M, what's in your mojito? Love to see you. <laughs> He might not be able to. That's all right. It's a but good he one. says mint, lime, yeah. and coconut water. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that uh, sounds very nice. That would go perfect. That would go great. You, know, um, once, uh, you can do um, mint. Well, no, that probably wouldn't go with it. Mint julep wouldn't go. Well, just mm -hmm. a too, too fruity, right? Probably too fruity, yeah. You need something more... Like the lime is good. The lime is good and it's in the dish. So it's kind of nice to bring it through in another way. I mean, just a, a simple uh, lime and ginger sparkler is nice too. So you could use a little bit of sparkling water, a little lime juice, just a little few pinches of uh, ginger juice uh, if you have it around. I like to uh, juice ginger and citrus together. And sometimes that right away, you've got a drink. If you make shrub, everyone, uh, or anything, shrub's really popular. We teach it at the school. Uh, in the culinary program, you can make a shrub, like you could even make a pineapple lime shrub or something like that and add mint to it. That would be delicious. So. Aperol yeah. spritz. Oh, an Aperol spritz. Yeah, we're going into imbibing an yeah. Aperol spritz. What's Aperol spritz? An Aperol is a, is a liqueur made out of rhubarb. So it's got a bright okay. red bright red color, oh. you just add it to a little bit of Prosecco or uh, sparkling wine with a big wedge of orange mm -hmm. and on, on ice. So it's super refreshing and kind of be beautiful color too. They're, they're pretty popular when the, warm, when the weather gets warm around here. Mm -hmm. So there was one other um, question. Yes. M asked, yes, noting all these riffs on the dish, I'm tempted to barbecue or pan fry slices of lion's mane, cooling it, and then adding the seed crunch and baking it. Is that cooking? Is that cooking the main, lion's mane too much? Will it make it too mushy? I guess would be the question. Like, is it if if you're searing, no. Just as long as you sear it on both sides to get the browned edges, okay, and then kind of crusty edges, you can do that and then paint it and then crumb it and then pop it in the oven. It won't need much time. Just don't overcook it in the oven on that side because if you're just pan, um, if you're just um, doing the sear, it's just a few seconds on each side at a high heat, okay? And you should be fine. Cut thick slices of the lion's mane if you do that. Maybe a slightly lower temperature on oh, the bake. And I just thought of another one, cauliflower steaks. Oh yeah, cauliflower yeah. steaks would work so good with this. And that all you have to do is you could, now you could grill. If you cut the cauliflower steaks nice and thick, you could grill that if you want. And then um, dress it up with the, with the uh, sriracha and the, um, the nut crumble and then pop it in the oven just to finish it. And then it's done. That would be so delicious. That would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's really good. <laughs> You're making me hungry. And we all know the benefits of cauliflower, right? I mean, that's an excellent, excellent vegetable. Good brassica. Okay, any more comments or we might call Thank it you. a session. I'll say this, um, we're really grateful to be together. Yes. Because being together is better than being alone. And count the ways, you know, when you're alone, you get bored. You get grumpy, you get tired, you get uninspired. And when we're together, we're creating family. And, and we're also kind of elevating our vibe to, to match that of our fabulous presenters. And then we're also reminded of what cooking is about. Because cooking is not just throwing something in a pan and throwing it in your mouth without really connecting to it and, and really being with it and seeing it as an art form and, and seeing as a just kind of a, a part of the life cycle that makes us more healthy and holy and happy and, and, and you know, really just 
shifting the vibe and getting rid of the background noise. So when you're when you're in the kitchen and you're making food and you're doing it with your family, you know, you want to be happy and you want to have good music going on and and just create this this kind of loving embrace. And then as you eat it, it's just to like go, I can't believe I have this opportunity. <laughs> what, a, what a treat to eat something that's made this way and knowing that the ingredients are really good and 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 going slow and appreciating it and leaving some for later. Because yeah. the thing about cooking, you, you don't want to cook every meal. It's too much work. So if yeah. you make this kind of fish, like we have fish and slaw, that's a couple, two, three meals ready to happen. It and really is. Slaw, you know, somebody comes over, you go, hey, you want some slaw? And they go, oh, slaw? You go, well, try this. And they go, oh, my God, that's like, that's not coleslaw the way my mother made it. So this whole idea of, of flavors of health and cooking for health and eating for health is, is a way that we really transform um, our, our, ourselves and our families and our society. And children can appreciate this. So I think really kids are cultured to, you know, eat commercial food and be part of that whole culture. But by having home culture and, and making mealtime happen and, and fun, it, it's just, it's incredibly, you know, enriching for all of us. So I appreciate the Marxists and, and, and the friends who showed up today. And I, I hope that this inspires you to replicate this dish and then to share other, other ideas that come from it. Because as we see, there's just a certain basic patterns here. And then yeah. those patterns can be applied in all kinds of cool ways. So Helga said, thanks for the great presentation of the layered oh, flavors, incorporating knife skills and sanitary measures. That's, that's really thank good. You. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotta speak to those things. I just thought of one more thing you could add to this slaw, like next day, this is what I do. Like next day you have that leftover and maybe everyone devoured the fish or the protein. Yeah. I would take that slaw, I would take an avocado, I'd slice avocado in there, or I'd make a medium boiled egg, maybe both, add some sunflower seeds or some some nuts in there, and then you have a full, like, that's a perfect lunch to me. That's so delicious. So, some ideas. That's a brunch. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you so much Ed, for inviting us. We have well, a great things we'll, we'll be together soon. Okay, we will. Nice to see you, Chris. Love you both. Bye. Beautiful. Bye. Bye.